So I'm looking to get myself another sport bike, which, I, but I want the fast one. I want something that's gonna be really fast and fun. Okay, fast, do you mean like top end power, like mid range punch or? or fast, what? I don't, none of that nerd talk. I wanna go fast. Fast, so like top end peak power, that, that's all that matters to you. It doesn't matter to you that this is more comfortable. And none, yeah, none I, want, I want all the powers. Is that this bike? Yeah, the, the R6 is probably the, fastest, but that's not really the whole story. I just I just want to go fast. This is all I want. I want to be fast. I'm going to be a fast boy on the street. If only there was someone out there willing to make a video on this topic. But, but which one's faster? A shame. Think something new. Alrighty everybody, you know that we've been talking about the RS660 here on the channel quite a bit, but the thing we wanted to do today was show you how this bike is really unique when you compare it to a fully fared 650 motorcycle in the form of this Ninja 650 here, and the tried and true fast boy Yamaha R6. So you really are gonna see today how this motorcycle splits the difference between these two in more ways than one. And Spite, where'd we get that R6 actually? So we actually got this from a buddy of mine who I ride with, his name's Sid, and he was gracious enough to lend us this bike that looks brand new. Looks so but, good on camera. But it has just, it's got 11,000 miles on it. 11,000 street miles. Now if I can't R6. throw Sid under the bus a little bit, Sid, you gotta get this thing out on track, buddy. 11,000 street miles and you never take it on track. I'm gonna personally put you on track. <laughs> and then this bike over here was from our Discord boy, wasn't it? Yep, that one is from Ricky ATX on the Discord. He was nice enough to drive this out last night and drop it off for us to shoot this video with. So guys, this bike literally has paper plates on it. It's, it, he literally just got it and he gave it to us. So thank you, Ricky <laughs> ATX for entrusting us with the 650. We promise we're not gonna bin it or do anything crazy with it. Now, I think the important thing to note here today is that these bikes are all pretty different. And we're gonna show you that and we're gonna start off with the ergonomics on the 650 over here. Okay, everyone, whenever we talk about ergonomics on a motorcycle, if you watch the Yaman Noob channel, it's three things you gotta think about. It's the handlebar position, the seat position, and the foot placement as well. Now, this 650 here, if you guys can see on the camera is a very comfortable place to sit. I barely have an angle on my back when I'm sitting on this thing. I'm sitting on it, just chilling here. Can put my hands at the handlebars. It's a very comfortable place to sit. And this gas tank shape is actually telling me a lot about what this motorcycle is trying to do as well. It's a very street oriented bike. Got this nice bulbous shaped gas tank. You can't really get in the full tuck here without bumping your elbows against your knees and stuff like that. But Spike, give me some of the specs on this bike too. So this is the tried and true Kawasaki Parallel Twin 6 50. It's 649 cc's, 68 horsepower, and 48 foot-pounds of torque, which is pretty good. It's a motorcycle that any beginner can hop on, and it's a little bit heavy at 425 pounds for what it is, but as a street bike, it's you don't really notice it. It's totally fine. Now let's go to the opposite end of the spectrum and take a look at the R6 compared to this thing. All right guys, opposite end of the spectrum here, this is your tried and true Yamaha R6. Now, you're gonna notice that this seat height is sky high, these pegs are sky high, and these clip-ons are really low. As I mount up on this bike, my back has a very extreme pitch forward, and it's telling me to get into a tuck and to attack every single corner that I see. The other thing I'm noticing as well is this gas tank is very wide, very flat, designed for you to keep your chin right here in the pocket and enjoy this motorcycle in a very sporting kind of way. But Spite, what are the specs on this thing? So this R6 has a 599cc inline four, which means you got a lot of little cylinders in there moving super duper fast. And to do that, it's putting down 117 horsepower and a pitiful 45 foot-pounds of torque, which is a little bit lame, not gonna lie. It is a little bit lighter at 419 pounds, but when you start stripping the street stuff off to make this a track bike, you can get this way under 400, no problem. Now, let's take a look at the RS660, which is gonna split the difference between these two. All right guys, now sitting here on the Aprilia RS660, you can tell this is a very sporty motorcycle, but it's not nearly as extreme as the R6. Now, when I put my hands down here, you can tell I'm in a pretty committed position, but my pegs are still pretty low right here. Even though my seat height's kind of tall, I'm sitting on this motorcycle and I feel really comfortable. It's a bike you can literally ride all day long. The gas tank shape is somewhere between the 650 and the 600. It's still a bit of a bulbous shape, but it's got this nice cutout here where you put your chin and you start going and you get 
get out and carve those corners on this bike. Spike, what are the specs on this machine? So this is a new machine, totally new engine, 659 cc's. It's a parallel twin, but it does have the 270 degree crank, which gives you that nice exhaust note that the Ninja 650 lacks. It's putting down 100 horsepower right on the nose and 49 foot pounds of torque. And the best part is it weighs in at only 403 pounds wet and ready to ride. That is super light and it's a super big deal in this category. Particularly when it doesn't have the screaming top end power of an R6, a little bit lighter weight is gonna give you a better power to weight ratio. But speaking of power, let's take a look at the dyno graphs for each of these bikes to see where and how they make their different power. All right guys, these motorcycles make power in very different ways. And the best way to see how a motorcycle makes its power is looking at its dyno graph. Now Spike, talk to me a little bit about the dyno on this bike. So the dyno chart on this bike is prototypical 600 inline four. It's not even awake until you get it to about 10 and a half, 12,000 RPM. And at that point it's kind of just going up, going up, going up, and then it goes whoop up and then that's where it starts to get fun. Yep. It's, it's this big surge of power right at the top, and so you really have to keep this thing on the boil to make it powerful. Otherwise, it kind of feels like a wet noodle at about 8,000 RPM. It's making 55 horsepower and 35 foot-pounds of torque, which is abysmally slow. Yeah, that's not a whole lot of power. And by comparison, the RS660 here at 8,000 RPM is making 70 horsepower and 45 foot-pounds of torque. Now, it obviously doesn't rev as hard as the R6, so that's not to tell you that it's faster, but the feeling of this bike at a lower RPM is that it is a little bit faster and more punchy. It also has fewer cylinders to move around, so it's gonna hit a little bit harder lower down in the rev range, which makes this thing pretty fun to ride. Now, the 650 over here at 8,000 RPM, it's basically done. This thing claps out, I think, at 9,500 RPM, right? Something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's, it's basically gasping for air at 8,000 RPM. It has nothing more to give. Yeah, and this bike's gonna be making about 62 horsepower and 42 foot-pounds of torque at that 8,000 RPM mark. But remember, it's already basically at the limit of what it's gonna rev out to, whereas this thing's just getting started. So you can't really look at displacement as the whole story for a motorcycle's performance. However, when things like gearing, real-world performance, rear tire grip, and all sorts of other things come into play, the acceleration figures are gonna be vastly different as well. So let's take a look at how each of these motorcycles accelerates in the real world. Alrighty, everybody, we are out here on location doing the test that I think a lot of people want to know about. Doing 650 versus 660 versus R6. I think to a lot of normies, they look at these bikes and they go, oh, those are all fully fared sport bikes. They're all the same. And I think we can all say they couldn't be more different, right? <laughs> oh, my God. They're, they're all such different motorcycles. Yeah, and we're going to get into why as we do these quick first impressions. So Mr. Spite is aboard the R6 because, well, clearly he loves sky-high RPMs and track days, right? <laughs> yeah, that's everything I know <laughs> that's and you. love. That's you. That's what you do. Um, <laughs> Whitney's on the RS660, and I'm on the Ninja 650. And what we're going to do is we're going to go out here on this road and swap out a couple times and see how we all feel about them. Um, I think the first thing we're going to notice is ergonomics, honestly. That's, it's it's got to be the number one thing. Oh, yeah. I mean, already this thing's... You feel like a gargoyle. 
All right, everybody. So as I mentioned, ergonomics are the first thing you're going to notice on these bikes. I think we all talk about the difference in cylinders and powers, and that is apparent. And the way they make their power is different. But as soon as you swing a leg, you know exactly what these bikes are trying to do. And Spite, what, what do you think that R6 is trying to do? <laughs> Obviously, it's trying to be a comfortable commuting street bike. Uh, no, this thing is 100% motorsport. I think you said it best. It's it's really just a race bike with lights. Um, it feels that way, and having to wait for the power sucks dick. I mean, it's it's tough to just sit here and let the engine spin and spin and spin and spin and spin to get into the power. But once you do, there's plenty on tap. And, you know, the, the way it goes around a corner is just magical. It feels great. But yeah, I love the chassis and the frame on that R6. It just dives right into corners. Yeah, it makes you want to really rev it out. But, yeah, you got to keep that thing in first and second gear everywhere to get any meaningful power out of it. Yeah, like, I, I've been poodling around at, like, 8,000 RPM, and it's halfway there. Meanwhile, here on the Ninja 650, I'm at 5,000 RPM, and that's about halfway. So that's a big difference. <laughs> um, but, you know, I can chill here. Uh, I am so comfortable on this bike. This sits exactly like a Ninja 400, actually probably a little bit more upright. My back is perfectly comfortable. My pegs are nice and low. I am just vibing on the Ninja 650. But Whitney, how are you feeling on the RS 660? You know, I'm feeling a little cramped. Uh, someone who's not used to riding like this, I could, um, I don't know, I could get uncomfortable real quick on this bike. Interesting. Yeah, I, I find the RS a pretty comfortable spot, but I'm probably used to really sporty bikes, and so that might be the difference there. Yeah, for sure. I feel like maybe it wouldn't take more than a couple trips to kind of break it in, in terms of just getting my brain to acclimate to it. I will say one thing that's surprising here on the uh, Ninja 650 is, you know, this TFT looks great. This is a cool little cockpit to sit out of, and a very appropriate beginner bike and that's I think a thing that we think a lot about these bikes too is you know oh could I get an R6 as my first bike no could I get an R6 as my first bike probably not could I get a 650 as my first bike absolutely this is a great entry point for motorcycling for a more mature rider uh, but Spike can you tell me why besides the power and the zinginess of the R6 that you think it's not a great beginner bike the ergos being so committed really makes you focus on your body position, the way you're sitting. I mean, if you sit with your feet down like you're on a normal motorcycle, it doesn't feel right. If you put your feet up on the pegs and you push your weight forward a little bit and you're, you know, you're, you're doing... You get you know, that one butt cheek off. Yeah, you're doing fast boy stuff, then it really feels good. And that that's a double-edged sword because it feels better the more leaned over the bike is and that's going to push you to want to keep pushing the motorcycle it's this feedback loop that could potentially end in you pushing way too hard than you're ready for and this is a fairly unforgiving motorcycle you know it's it's a weapon pure and simple yeah, and to your point, I think you're always searching for that power. You know, you try to squeeze out that power band just a little bit more out of the corner exit every time. And that's enticing for a beginner and probably a dangerous place to be. Whereas the 650, it's kind of like, you know, it, uh, it gives you the same feelings as you'd always get, like uh, whether you're at 2,000 RPM or 8,000 RPM. It's a very linear power band, very simple to ride and use. Yeah, you're not, you're not searching for power on it. It's just kind of usable everywhere. That is the first time on this motorcycle I felt like I've been doing what it wants to do. And even then I only got it to about 14,000 RPM. It still had way more to give. Yeah, it's got 2,000 more. All that power is all at the very tippy top. That engine is basically a two-stroke. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but what do you say we swap out now and you can pick between the RS or the 650 and you can tell me how it feels to you. And you too, Whitney. It's crazy. It's like my back already hurt. Oh, just wait till you ride the R6. That bike's friendly. Yeah, that, this I'm thing so is so... I'm so curious as to why I feel so differently about it. 
Maybe it's like my posture or something. It's because you haven't spent a lot of time on bikes like these. <laughs> this is so friendly. Wait till you ride this. You're you're gonna hate it. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, I'm so much more comfortable. Holy cow. First thing I notice when I jump on the R6 versus a 650, um, the brakes. The brakes are so much more powerful on a 600 class bike than a 650. It's ridiculous. Uh, this is like proper race bike brakes. Yeah, it's it's really cool how fast that bike stops when you give it just a little bit of front brake. Yeah, got plenty of fuel through the master here. It's very similar to the uh, R1 setup, but yeah, like I'm already, I literally feel like I'm getting ready to pit in somewhere. Like I, I just, ah, I love sport bikes so much, but this is the <laughs> wrong environment to use them in, you know? It's not fair. Like you just want to get after it. But it's not the right place or the right time, you know? I think the first thing I noticed going between the R6 and the RS660 is the difference in the peg height. The yes. peg height is so much lower on this bike. It's so much more comfortable to sit on. Yeah. It's, that makes a huge, huge, huge difference in the way these bikes ride. And yeah, for those of you at home that might be wondering why there's a big difference in, in peg height, um, it's because the R6 is designed to carve up corners at maximum lean angles, right? So when you're sitting at 50 degrees of lean, you want to make sure you're not dragging hard parts. So this is a bike that obviously has very high pegs, but honestly, I took the RS660 on track and I never drug a peg anywhere. So then I guess the question is, do we need such ridiculously high pegs on the R6 or? No, we... <laughs> no, <laughs> for a street bike, not at all, man. This is so uncomfortable. <laughs> I feel like my heels are gonna click to my butt cheeks. <laughs> Which I'm sure Whitney is not feeling that as the 650 is the most comfortable bike of the bunch. Yeah, I feel great. I feel like, uh, you know, I don't have to go see the chiropractor tomorrow. <laughs> it's just so funny that you thought that about the RS660. I, I cannot wait until you jump on the R6. <laughs> oh, God. The seat is hard as a plank. The pegs are so high. It's so committed and racy. It's, yeah, it's, it's telling you to do one thing and one thing only. It just wants to go rip up a racetrack. Um, I'm not sure why people still buy these as street bikes. It's so weird. Because they look cool and they're cheaper than an R1? Well, the RS660 looks cool and it's cheaper than an R1 and it's way better as a street bike. So hope, fingers crossed. You know, we start seeing some, some changes in the world. You know, I don't feel any difference, you know, I mean, obviously this road isn't as twisty as the section we were on, but I don't feel any difference or compromise in the handling on this motorcycle than the R6. It no. It feels like it's just as capable. You're only really gonna notice the difference and the type of pace you can put down at a racetrack. If you're on the street, the RS660 is every bit as fast as an R6, everywhere, basically. Yeah, I, it, it feels the same, but more comfortable. I just can't believe the power band on this motorcycle. You have to rev this thing out to 15 grand to get power out of it. That's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> like, why? How about we flip around here, and then let's switch off for the last time. Ah, oh, this sounds so good. I love yeah. the way it revs out. Yeah, this is... The <laughs> Why? <laughs> and it's funny because it's not like an R1 where you say why. It's more of like a, like it's supposed to be on a racetrack. You're supposed to ring it out. It has such high potential. Like, yeah. Swing yeah. the leg over it, Whitney. All right, what's gonna happen? Is the internet gonna break? Is my brain gonna break from going over this? Swinging Who put the put this leg in over commute this? mode? Who the hell put this in commute mode? <laughs> B mode is B for baby, A for awesome, and standard for eh. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, the fury. Where do my, where do my feet go? <laughs> oh yeah, this is awful. <laughs> Freaking awful. Why would you why would you do this to yourself? Unless you're racing, I guess. Yeah, as as a race bike, that's awesome. Oh my god, I feel like I'm crouched on a tree branch or something. Yeah, it's quite stupid. Oh man, this thing is ridiculously comfortable. <laughs> this, I literally feel like I just got into, you know, an old uh, Caprice Classic or something. 
it's just comfy and spongy and yeah your back is perfectly upright feeling good yeah man the I, you know i've said this before and i've simped for the rs660 now probably like in five different videos or something but this is such a cool bike man it splits the difference perfectly um there's no bike like this there's no bike like this on the market right now it's completely unique you can feel the heat from the exhaust yeah that that bike is so high strung it gets so hot best part about the rs2 is i've got quick shifter up and down i've got cruise control i've got adjustable modes are you kidding me i have on and off those are technically <laughs> adjustable modes Weird muscles in my thighs tense up that I didn't even know existed as, as weird as that sounds, but you're like... And you didn't even rev it out! I heard it go by, you didn't even get that thing above 12 grand! <laughs> get, get it? Come on, it's not that fast! <laughs> it's not that fast! <laughs> Come on, you rode, the, you rode the ZH2, come on! You're fine! <laughs> See guys, this is why the R6 is a bad beginner bike. Yeah, what the hell? This is... It may imagine, Whitney, starting on that as a first bike. No! God, no! The best part is when you tuck in on that bike and you just watch that analog tack just go all the way to 16. That's that is, so cool. That is the best thing about that bike is the analog tack is so big and right in your face because <laughs> yeah. it's off the old R1. Yeah. It's exactly the same reason why I love my Daytona. But I will concede, they, they suck on the street, man. I mean, look at you. You're literally like this. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you're meant to ride that bike. Whitney's like, get me back on the ZH2, something more normal. <laughs> Where's my trusting Centaur that is I gonna... Ca I cannot believe that you thought the ZH2 was like friendly and nice to ride it, but that you're like, this is scary. <laughs> no way. This feels, I don't know narrow and the the power band on that is scarier i'll give you that because it goes whoop you know that's the same uh i had to i basically had a come to jesus moment like that when i had the when i did the first ride on the r1 yep and that completely reshaped my perspective about motorcycling in one like pull of the throttle i was like oh okay i get it now that bike was so i still think about the r1 all right this is this is it this is it whitney this is it right here this is it this is it red light thr highway oh, 360 shit. come on i want to see you second or third gear ring that out all right i want to thank my mom for giving birth to me <laughs> i want to thank my dad for meeting my mom nothing's gonna happen you'll be fine it's this not one. that fast <laughs> Lay into it, Whitney! You got clear traffic! Go, go, go! Yeah! And that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is why we like sport bikes. <laughs> for, that, for that laugh that Whitney just gave me right there. Alrighty, folks, we're going to get this back in the shop and wrap it up for today and uh, see the final conclusions. Now, when it comes to these three motorcycles, one of the most important things you got to think about are the specifications that each of them come with and the technology that each of them come with as well. Now, this R6, despite having all these new fancy plasticing stuff, is still basically the same bike that Yamaha sold you back in 2008. So while it does have a very simplistic traction control system and a couple different power modes, it's nowhere near as sophisticated and advanced as the RS660. This bike features an up and down quick shifter, slide control, advanced traction control, all kinds of great stuff, and even cruise control as well, which when you start to look at the price point of the R6, the RS660 makes a great case for itself. On the other hand, the 650 over here is your classic beginner bike. It's going to have non-adjustable front suspension, very simple components, right side up forks, no fancy master cylinders. It's a bike that's built to a budget to accommodate the entry level rider. Now, the other thing you'll notice as well are the specifications for the front suspension on the R6. This has fully adjustable KYB forks, basically the same as you'd see on the R1, whereas the RS660 features an only rebound adjustable front suspension. So that's really telling you the difference between something that's a competition race machine, something that's basically a street sport bike, and another bike that's an entry-level beginner bike. 
All right, everyone, wrapping the day up here today, we've spent a good amount of time with these three motorcycles, and let's start off with the R6. Spite, what would you make of it? So if this is the Goldilocks situation, this is the porridge that's too hot. Yes. This is uh, extreme. It's, it's the seating position is too aggressive for me. The fact that you gotta keep the engine on the boil all the time is too aggressive for me. It's just, this thing, it's very clear that this is just a race bike. Yep. They put lights on it and sold it to you for some reason. <laughs> yeah. So, I yeah. mean, it's ridiculous. Whitney, what did you make of the R6? As someone who doesn't ever get into RPMs that way, like in sport bikes, that was insane. I didn't anticipate that at all. Every time we film, I'm like blown away. But that was, that was nuts. Yeah. I lost my nuts when yeah. I broke <clears> that. I still will never get over the fact that you think the ZH2 is more friendly and easy to ride than that bike, which will tell you guys a lot about how ridiculous the R6 is. And I agree with Spite and Whitney to an extent. It's a competition bike, first and foremost. Um, this thing, in my opinion, has literally no reason to exist on the street. Um, it really doesn't belong on the street. It's difficult to access the performance and power that it can produce and um, it's just a little bit too much in my opinion. Now, let's swing over the other side of the pole here, the Ninja 650. Spite, what do you make of it? That's the porch that's too cold. <laughs> that one's, th this one is miserable for opposite reasons because- Oh, come on, not miserable. It's a it's, beginner it's bike. It's a beginner bike, and yeah. that's my problem with it, is it's, I've grown beyond enjoying a beginner bike. Um, it's a perfect place for you to start if you want that aggressive look, but not the aggressive feel. Because this thing is, it's, it gives you all of the sensation and it looks and feels cool, but it's a responsible engine and you don't have to rev the tits off of it. Yeah, and it could not be more different and just more laid back than the R6. Yes. Whitney, what'd you make of the Ninja 650 here? Most comfortable, in yeah. my opinion, for sure. Like, my back was thinking of getting back on this one, more upright. Sure, it's not as, you know, doesn't have as much get up and go, but I still enjoyed it, especially for a beginner bike. Yeah. And now we come to the RS660. This one's just right. <laughs> I mean, it's it's literally the perfect blend of both of these motorcycles. It really does feel like a Penigale, but without 160 horsepower, which is awesome. I mean, the Penigale was great. It's just a little bit much for the daily ride. Yeah. And this thing is just like 100 horsepower is a almost perfect number in this bike. Yeah, I, I cannot say enough good things about the RS660. It, it is just this, like you said, Goldilocks zone of a motorcycle. It, it makes you wonder why we didn't make these bikes in years past. Mm -hmm. Why are we just now seeing this kind of twins cup, perfectly balanced bike? Whitney, what'd you make of it? It was just enough like, oh, this is badass. Yeah. You can feel it, it sounds great, it handles great. It's it's definitely a few steps up from the Kawasaki. Oh yeah, yeah, with the auto blipper, the way it makes its power, the master cylinder feel. Um, it's such a good bike. And it's really cool to see it just perfectly splitting the difference between these two bikes. And I'm really hopeful we'll see that Yamaha R7 so it can compete against this RS660, but I guess we'll have to see. So final conclusions here, your favorite bike of the day? R, uh, the Aprilia RS right here, for sure, 100%. Whitney? Aprilia. The Aprilia. This is Aprilia, I guess it's the one to get. We'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later. That's just, just get the Aprilia, just do it. Between this and my desert sled, you might think I'm just some horrible biscotti boy, but really, if you click this video right over here, I will prove to you that I love more motorcycles than just Ducati biscottis. Click it and find out.